Huh. <clears throat> oh, I didn't get a drink. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything that I was supposed to do. You guys are crazy. Always running late. There's never a point when I'm not late. I don't understand. Never a single point in time where Josh is actually on time and ready to do a show. So, welcome everybody. Welcome to the show. It's going to be fantastic today. So, we have our 18 by 24 inch exploding moon. It's going to be really neat. So, we're going to redo this one like we did. Everybody seemed to enjoy it over on Facebook. They liked the photos and stuff. Everybody loved it over on TikTok when we were watching do it. So I figured I would do an every single step video for the weekend. And, well, my weekend anyway. Monday is my Friday. And show you guys exactly how to do it. So if you want to learn how to paint a moon like this, I have the video. It's over on my YouTube channel already. It's one of the highest viewed videos on there in just 48 hours. It's climbing like a madman. Now, what we're going to do is get a little of our Bob Ross liquid clear, and we're going to cover the entire canvas, even over the moon, right? Because you might want to paint something over your moon, which is going to need liquid clear on it, right? Now, first things first, let's strap this sucker down. There we go. That way we won't move too much. Tighten it down. Love this easel from Meaden. Absolutely fantastic sponsor. Cannot go wrong with the mead and easels, man. I'm telling you, I've always had a mead and easel since the very beginning. I could never afford the Bob Ross one. It was always like $250. And I'm like, good lord, I can't spend that much money on a Bob Ross easel. So I went to look for mead and uh, for different options for an easel. And I found the mead and set, or the mead and easel, and it was really nice. And I got one, and we had it for like two years. And then I got a bigger one, and then I got a bigger one, and I got a bigger one. <laughs> It's all about getting bigger and bigger and bigger until we're at this one. Now, I really love this guy. You can hold two canvases on it. It's absolutely fantastic. Just fantastic. I can put another one down here. I can sit down and paint and put the one up here as my photo for reference, right? Lots of cool things. It folds flat, all sorts of stuff. This isn't a, it's not an ad for this easel. I'm just telling you, it's one of my favorites. My absolute favorite. I even have a brand new one over in, right off screen, right behind you guys. Brand new easel, so when the, this one eventually breaks, because I paint so dang much, that when it eventually gives up the ghost and uh, no longer will hold the canvas anymore, then I have a brand new one already ready to go. So you never know what's going to happen during a live show. This easel could break during this painting, and then I'd really be in trouble. I would be in trouble if this guy tried to break while we were painting it. Now. Back and forth across our whole canvas board, which we've already done the moon on. Like I said, if you want to know how to do the moon, you got to go over to my YouTube page because I have a full length video. It's only 15 minutes. It'll take you to do a moon just like this. All you need is like a couple pieces of tape, some white and black gesso, and a little pan or a paper plate or something that makes a circle is all you need. Right? And you trace around your circle and you fill it in and dab on some stuff and you're all set with your moon. Literally, it takes like 15 minutes, barely. Barely 15 minutes, right? And then you allow it all to dry. So the black gesso was dry, then we did the moon, we allowed that to dry, and then we come back with the liquid clear. Now, the liquid clear, because it's an oil-based paint, will stay wet for so long, right? And allow us to paint over the top and allow all of our colors to slide and move. So what if we First, come in and remove all the excess clear that we don't need, right? We just put it on, and no matter if you're painting with Josh or if you're just starting out, you're going to put on too much, right? I still put on too much. It's fine. All that excess paint, right? Get rid of all that stuff. Now, we've got a nice, slick, wet board, and we need to take and put some paints onto it. Remember, this guy is available for sale, and you can go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and grab it. We're streaming to all three of the biggest platforms. YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, all three of them, guys. So, no matter where you're watching, I'm streaming to somewhere else as well. Everybody but poor old Instagram, right? It's okay. It's all right. Now, over here, got our canvas all wiped off. Now what we're going to want to do, especially if we're going to want to make like an exploding moon like we did on Facebook the other day, we're going to want to get our sky sort of red, but not, not just bright red, right? So let's go and grab a little of our bright red color. A little of our alizarin crimson color, right? 
This is the Bob Ross brand. The Alizarin Crimson today is from Windsor & Newton, and the white is from Windsor & Newton as well. So a little of our crimson, a little of our Bob Ross red, and a little of the brown, and you gotta have it. You gotta have it, otherwise it's gonna be too bright, right? So a little of our dark sienna brown, and we come up in here, and you just start dumping on little bits, little things, not trying to get all of the color all the way to the moon. You see how instantly it starts to look like an explosion. And we come out here, and whatever color that we drop on, whoop, put this guy down. These canvas panels are kind of hard to paint on sometimes. Whatever color that we drop on onto our sky, right, is what our little bits are going to shine and look like. Now, we don't want to have too much paint on the canvas, and so we're going to stretch it across the whole thing, dragging it out, not trying to get it onto our moon, actually trying to leave a small little line of darkness around our moon, which will give it a much more of a 3D look. All right, take some of that red, we'll put it down in here. Reddish, brownish color. Now, say you got too much, it's too bright. Okay, no worries. Watch this. Come back in with a paper towel and remove some of it. All right, if you don't want it to be so bright, take away some of those brighter bits. Take off some of that paint, come back in, spread out the remainder of the stuff that we have, and all of a sudden we can, we can see our little bright bits a lot lighter anyway, and then we'll go back and brighten them up anyway. So don't worry about it too much. Okay, and in fact, I might not have wanted to come all the way down with that red down into here. Let's change up the color, guys. Let's see what it's gonna look like. This is when we get to prep our scene. We can decide, maybe we'll throw some yellow on top. Maybe we'll do all sorts of different things on it, right? We get to choose what we get to do out here in the night. Now, I'm gonna go in a little bit into my blue and then a little into my purple as well. So we're gonna have a little touch of blue right down into here, just so we have some sort of difference, right? It's gonna be a, a different kind of a scene versus all being just red. Now, we can take and blend out our blue in a little bit. We'll come back, grab that purple color. This is a Gamblin 1980 color. It's called Dioxazine Purple, and it's really neat. I like it a whole lot. Come back in here. Now, some of the paints, like this Dioxazine Purple, can smell a little bit more strongly than the other paints can. It's just a weird thing. I don't know why it does it, but it stinks a little bit more than the rest. So. If you've got a paint that's a little stinkier than the others, don't worry about it. So do I. <laughs> it's all good. Let's come in here, we'll wash off these brushes, and then, well, this one brush anyway, and then we'll be ready to start painting, guys. So, we're going to go through some colors, we're going to get out some colors, we're going to do lots of stuff. So you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Let me know in the comments below while I grab a few more colors out onto the palette. Remember, this one is available for sale, and you can get it anytime you want. If you go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, what if there's like no more room to put any more colors, Josh? There's no room. Let's come in here. Plop a little bit of that right there, and then a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You guys know... Since we're doing blue and purple and crimsony with the red, gotta get our yellow out so we can have our explosion. That's fantastic. A little bit of color there. We've already got the browns. I think we're good. I think we're good for everything that we need. Just like that. So, here's what we're gonna do first though. We're gonna take a bit of that Indian yellow, which looks orange, until you put it up onto the canvas. Then it gets very yellow. Right, so I'm going to take my Indian yellow, I'm going to layer that down on top of this stuff. Not too much of it. You don't need a whole heck of a lot. But as we come in and hit it with our, our brightness of our white, it's going to change and have that thing be a lot lighter color than it needs to be. And then we get to decide what it looks like, remember? So let's come in and wash this guy off. Where are you guys watching from? How cold is it out there tonight? It's actually warming up in Las Vegas. It's not too dang cold. Not right now, anyway. Currently. Currently, our temperature is quite temperate, actually. That's like that. Get on there, so stop moving. Here we go. <coughs> now, you can also do this technique on canvas. I had somebody ask that the other day. I said, like, why do it on the board? Why, why don't you just do it on canvas? I said, you can, and I have. I've got one right over here. 
uh, a 24 by 24 that's waiting to be painted on, right? That we did on a canvas versus on this board. I just, for some reason, I like repurposing these little frame boards. I'm gonna throw it away anyway. I might as well paint on it versus throwing it out, right? Very cool looking little moon, guys. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? Make sure if you're watching over on YouTube, you give me a thumbs up over there. Gotta have a little thumbs up-ish. Now we're gonna come back with some white paint and a little fan brush and just erupt in some color. Are you ready to see it? What's it gonna look like as we pull down on our white? Just like that, coming down over here. A little white onto the brush. And then, oh my, let's just erupt into this bright spot. Pow! Just, oh man, that's insane. Right? The brighter white it is, the more that you're going to get out of it, right? We're going to come in here, we're going to start to mix it outwards towards the edge, but not allowing it to contact the dark rim of the planet, okay? You can allow it to spread outwards. Blew all of this stuff just straight out. Poo -poo! All these little bits. Oh, that's so cool. That is so cool. Just so neat. You can even brighten it up a little bit more. Which is where do you want it to be? All up to you. It's an explosion. It's going to be all crazy. All nuts. We're going to come out here. We're going to mix it and mix it and mix it however we want it to look. Bang! You get all these weird little trippy things happen. Right? And then, again, the more bright white that you put right in that center area, the more immense our explosion is going to look. Because you got to have it be a little bit brighter and then it fade into a little bit darker. Just crazy! Oh, holy cow! My goodness! Now, let's decide what we're going to put underneath this crazy old guy, right? What do we put down here? You can even light up a whole little crazy bit coming out of this, this thing, too. Light it up, spread it out. Just as much or as little as you want it to show. Bang! Just, just wicked. Oh, I like it already, you guys. I like it already. So, we gotta come in. Let's, I was thinking, right? We did a desert scene. We have a desert scene coming out on YouTube on Wednesday. So, two days from now, we're gonna have a moon. Not like this, not exploding. Just a regular old moon. <laughs> With a desert scene coming out. So, I figured maybe today we do something different. Maybe we do a, a winter type scene with an explosion moon out in the night, right? So let's come in and mix up a good amount of paint just to come back and paint this enormous mountainous thing off here in the night, right? A little bit of our three favorite colors. So what are those three favorite colors that we like to mix in order to create a deep darkness that we like to call plurkle? It's a little purple, a little black, plurkle. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, not, it's not my, I didn't come up with it. The fans come up with all the names, right? Now, what are those three dark colors? Can you tell me in the comments below? Blue, black, and crimson, says Tabby, says Catherine, says Wanda, says Drunken Tiger Lily, and Jennifer Johnson. You guys are awesome. Spray Can King, says the BBC. Dude, Spray Can King. I kind of took, uh, I took inspiration from you spray paint guys, right? Like Alchemist, Spray Can King and sort of did my planet in acrylic the way that you guys spray your planet and then like lay paper onto it and pull it off and it's all crazy. I kind of did mine with bits of tape and paper and stuff to get all the texture. So thank you to the spray paint guys for all of the inspiration. All right, let's come back here. Instead of doing our normal old mountain, why don't we come back and let's do like a trippy, I don't know, ooh, yes. Like a Pride Rock style mountain. Just coming out over here. You know what? We could do like a, literally, <laughs> like a Pride Rock style mountain. Come out here. A little bit of thing. Down over there. Over here. Just wiggle it down. I mean, it's not perfectly Pride Rock. Give me a break, man. We're just literally making this thing up as we go. <laughs> literally. Maybe we'll come back. Maybe this guy's a little bit more jaggedy and crazy. Pulling it off to the side. We might be on some spacey weird little planet right it's got these spires kind of like uh kind of like uh oh i don't know uh, kryptonite planet krypton got all these spires coming out of it all 
weird and crazy like that. Pull it down, pull it over here. Doesn't have to just be the same thing over and over again. What if we, what if, guys? Just what if we came up into the madness? Pop down over there on Monday Night Madness. Welcome to season two, by the way. Season two, episode two of Monday Night Madness. Oh my God, I just had the best idea. What if we incorporate off into this faraway planet, just perhaps, we might be able to stick in some pyramids way back here. I just had this idea because that thing came out so pyramidal, right, that it just looked already like a pyramid and then gave me the idea, what if we have some pyramids out on this, I don't know, frozen scene? I don't know what it's going to look like. I know Aries getting mad at me because she said don't paint frozen pyramids before she can get one. And I'm not trying to, I'm just saying. And it came out the way it came out, man. They're going to be looking pretty cool. What if, by the way, we took a bit of our white and a bit of our blue, just a little touch. A little touch came up here. Right, whip these guys down. Pulling them out. Get our little pyramidal mountain back in here. We can go light it up different ways. But just to see that first one back in there. And then... Right, Come back, shape it around it just a little bit with our darkness so we get that perfect pyramidal shape. Bang, bang, boom. Over there like that. Don't want to make it too bright, adding a little bit of our stuff. Remember, it's not a perfect pyramid. We're just going to put three of them in here, and then you can decide what it is, right? Now, a little bit more of our darkness. We come back, and we had another guy. He was right there. came straight down. Right in front of our first guy back here. Straight off the back, we get to decide by adding more paint. That's why I always start with less. Always start with less because you can go back and add more. It's no big deal. All right, take our other guy. Now we got a bigger bit of a pyramid. At least we'll have two of them right in here. Bingo, bingo. We could do the smallest guy. I guess, I guess we could do him as well. What if though, off of this guy, right, we're going to come in here with our knife and just tap down gonna look like if we tap it across just little things right and we can always go back and change it and make it look different but if we just soften it down and just tap little bits little things just to make it look similar to having a little pyramidian out here going down one way down the other way and we get to decide what it looks like again doesn't have to do anything doesn't have to be anything have to look like what you think it might have to look like. Just do something strange, right? Somebody was talking shit and said, well, it's talking crap, excuse me. Somebody was talking crap and said, um, Josh just paints the same mountains over and over and over again, which is pretty, it's, it's kind of true. I've been kind of stuck on this mountain shape that I've been doing recently. It's one of my favorites that we found to do. So it's easy, gives you a lot of depth. I've been showing people how to do it, right? And then someone had to come in and run their mouth. And so now, Josh is going friggin' crazy. You think I can't paint anything different? Ha 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 ha! In your face! Look at this dude as we come down here. Right? Streak these guys off. We'll pull this guy down. Then we'll come back with that mountain, all that texture and stuff. That's kind of looking neat already. I'm just saying. It's kind of looking cool already. It's supposed to be weird and different. What if we came in with this guy? Straight down in front, off to the side. Boom, boom, boom. I never knew the palette knife was literally shaped perfectly to make pyramids. I had no idea that was going to happen like that. That's very cool. Now you can see we made the one in the front, uh, excuse me, the one in the middle a bit bigger because that's the would be the Great Pyramid in the middle, obviously. And then, again, we're not trying to make it look exactly like pyramids out here, but sort of something similar. Now let's come off with a bit of our white and a bit of our blue color. Down here, we're gonna make our snowy sort of highlight color. Right down there, a little bit of our sky blue mixed with a little bit of that darkness from our original madness mix. All right, we come in here, scrape it down, pull it over to the side, come off the edge, and let's just go nuts off of this dude. Maybe there's a little bit of shadowing back in here, right away from the edge. Remember, this is like a wintry scene where all of a sudden the, the moon hath exploded. Now, doesn't matter what your mountain looks like or how jagged it is or what planet we're on, right? 
All that matters, a little bit down here, you have a little bit of shadow and a little place for your light to stand out on, right? Let's make up a bit of light. So what if we came with a little bit of our our white and we just so happen to pick up some of that crimson too. So we might as well make it like a little, little kind of pinkish grayish color right here. See that? As you mix it down, you get that little bit, little streaks, maybe a teeny touch more of our crimson, but you don't need too much, I'm telling you. It'll overtake your, your white paint so fast. And you just want it to be just a white, whitish color with a little pinkish hue to it. It's from our moon exploding. All right, we come up here and we stay on to these guys. And as we streak it back and fade it away, right, get lighter and lighter and lighter, and then your blue starts to take over, right? Your eye is focusing on all of these very bright areas. And then all of a sudden, as it fades down into the darkness, that blue takes over and continues your eye off into the distance, right? Off the edge of the painting, a little bit of the light color right on the top. If we can get it, it's not coming off the back of my knife, so I need to go reload on the back side, right? If you want something on the back, pull it just on the back, right? So that way you got all the paint over here, and then you can come out and leave a little bright area here and there, everywhere as you come down. Little things lighten up in the night, right? Not everything's all got to go the same direction. So what if we pulled one side going back down this way? All these little things automatically start changing when you start pulling paint in other directions. You start getting different results, right? Now, let's come over here, grab this guy. Remember, we had our pyramid that was kind of taken over. Maybe it's a little sandy thing. Who knows out here on this frozen planet? This frozen planet that's not having a very good time out here in the night, right? Remember, guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Ooh. I forgot to get a drink before I came upstairs. That was a rookie mistake. Just a rookie mistake. Now, I'm going to come off the back of these little guys with a little touch of blue, right? A little touch, little bits. Not every place has to be, all be the same. And then that little touch of our whitish color that we had made on the one side, which we could have done prior to putting in our third or second guy, you know what I mean? Doesn't all have to look exactly the same. A bit of white, come off of this guy, hold it down in those directions. Look, even if you go over into your other pyramid, it's no worries, we can always go back and fix it. Come back in here, right, so we're pulling off, we're pulling off, pulling off. Not everything's gotta be the perfect thing. Remember, we're not painting pyramids. We're just painting like pyramidal style mountains off on this weird ancient planet. <laughs> Something, I don't know. We're figuring it out as we go, right? A little bit over there, a little bit over there. Now we can come back with our dark bit of our mountain and push it right back through, covering over, pushing the other one off in the distance. Okay, come back with a bit of our blue off the back side again. Let it rip down and slide. It can do whatever it wants to do, remember. We're not painting a pyramid. We're just painting something that's giving you the impression that it could be a pyramid on a different planet, off in the night. <laughs> I love that sentence, off in the night. A little bit here, a little bit there. Very cool, little crazy things, right? Maybe the snow got so built up on this guy, it was starting to come across the top, right? You never know. You never know what it's gonna look like until you go back in and do it. So go try something crazy, man. Try something a little fun, a little crazy. Take some of our brighter color and let's start throwing it down for some snowy bits down here. All right, and then we can all blend it out. You can see every time that we touch it, it starts to change with that blue color that's underneath. So as we come down, we stretch it, grab it, and stretch it. Sometimes you can take it and work it back up into your pyramidal style mountains, right? Whatever we want to do, we streak it down, we streak it down. We're on some crazy planet, bro, so it's all good. Don't worry, this guy we're going to pull off in this direction. Just like that, right? Trying to connect them, just a little touch, all based on our pressure. What is our pressure telling us to do? What is that saying, right? You can bring down some of this darkness from your mountains into the shadowy side, right? All depends on what you want it to do. Go back up, cover over with a couple little more details our snowy shadowy color literally just drop them right back into place right now let's say ooh, you know what would be cool i just had this thought i mean it's, I, it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not <laughs> you know it's gonna be cool 
What if, guys, what if we came in here and first things first, we need to sort of mix this up real good, right? Get rid of all that brightness, really mix it up. You can have all this misty stuff. You don't know what's happening back here, all right? And that's what we want to see back over here. Slide it up just so you get that mistiness. Now we can decide. Maybe there's a river back in there. Maybe there's a waterfall. Maybe there's something. Maybe there's some trees. Maybe there's this. Maybe there's that. We get to choose what it looks like, how it goes, right? Maybe there's some crazy old... It's a dark forest at the back of these guys as they start coming down. Right? Little differences coming up into that mist. Little things just dropping in all sorts of little stuff. Doesn't even have to go all the way. Right? You just want to have that little bit of darkness, just a little craziness. Little bit of craziness. Just like that, right? Come back in with our two-inch brush, very lightly from the bottom to the top. Let them streak up a little bit. It helps push that other stuff off into the distance, right? Now we can come in and really start to mush hard on the base of those trees, taking all that paint and having it get softer and softer and softer and softer. Wait, you can even come up in here into your mountain. Where does the trees end? That's the mystery, right? Why do they call it mystery? Because of the mist, guys. The mist! The craziness. <coughs> Gotta have that mistiness out there. Now, let's get a little bit brighter off of some of these guys on our backside, right? Just because we had that explosion in space. I would imagine it would be picking up a few little things on both sides of those guys. Just lights a little here, a little there. A little craziness. Got our mist stuff down here. You can even come into that white color that we've been messing around with, or just tap into your white up here and create a little bit of fogginess. Just by tapping it and then just continuing to work it in and work it in. Each time it's going to blend in with those darker colors. Every time that we tap on it, and you can flip the brush over. Oh, that's got more paint on that side. <laughs> Thought I had less. You come in, you can make all sorts of crazy fog. Just like that, right? Again, swiping it up into your trees just helps that transition from tree to fogginess. And then we can come in with all sorts of new stuff. Right? You never, it never fails to amaze me the things that you guys can do, right? I see such cool pictures that you guys send in. They give me inspiration, if you can believe that. You're like, no, there's no way I inspired Josh. Well, yeah, sometimes you guys do, I'm telling you. Sometimes you do. Let's go back and mix up a little bit of our dark color. We'll come back over here and we're going to start to mix it down and go crazy with this exploding moon on a frozen planet. Just wicked neat. Now, over here, over there, get a little bit of that darkness. We're going to come back in into this misty area with our same bit of color, right? And this is going to stand out as in front of those other trees. Now, who knows why? Anybody know why these trees are going to stand out as being in front of the trees that are off in the back there? Anybody have any clue? We can even change the whole trajectory of the forest line. Just by coming down in like that, coming up over here, tapping them down, coming off to the side, anywhere you want to go. What makes these guys stand out as being a little closer than those further away ones that we painted first? All right, what about them gives them the close feeling you know the answer. It's okay if you don't. No pressure. No pressure. I'm telling you. I'll come tell you the answer anyway, right? But what makes them a little dark? Let's see if anybody's paying any attention. You guys paying any attention back here? Anybody? No. No one pays attention back here. The mist. You guys know it's the mist, right? We'll come in. We'll very lightly take our brush. Just swipe up on those guys, creating just a billion little trees right back in there. With each little brush stroke that comes off, you drag a little bit up. It looks like a tree trunk. It's wicked cool. Come back in here and again. Watch, we can even pick up some of our mountain mist. Drag that over. And start going up and down and up and down. Maybe down a little bit lower. Maybe up a little bit higher. Maybe down a little bit lower. All depends on what you want yours to look like. I never like mine to be just a straight bit, right? That just looks weird to me. If it's too straight off or if there's not enough room, it just looks strange. Now, we come back here, and all of a sudden, we got these little wicked-looking ridges back here. And maybe we grab just a bit, just a bit of water onto the corner of our fan brush, just the top corner, right? So a bit of our white. Maybe we came off out of our forest right back here, fell down, 
Like this far away little falls, right? Maybe if that little falls came down, it was dropping down so much water that it just decided that it was going to burst right when it hit the bottom. So you grab some of that white very lightly, start pulling it out over here, over there. Boom, 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 right? Drop a little bit of falls off there. Now with the same brush, we can take our bit of river, right? Just get wider and wider and wider and wider as it comes away from the edge, leading away, right? Doesn't have to be the most perfect thing you've ever seen because we're going to go back and hit it with the brush anyway, right? So a little bit wider and wider and wider as it gets towards us from that far away little falls. Okay, now we'll come back with a dry one-inch brush, just like this guy. Come back in, start to spread him out. Long strokes, and then we'll get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Not trying to make it all the entire same bit of water, right? Now we got to come in and let's decide. We could do lots of stuff, guys. We could do you could do a bit of grass. You could do snow. You could do all sorts of different things out here on this trippy, crazy planet, right? What if? Let's do some grassy bits, but let's make it like a weird color. We'll do like, ooh, we'll do like a pinky kind of grass. We'll come in here with some white, a little bit of our crimson, back to our white, just kind of dab into it. Dab, 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 dab. We can always come over and get some of the bright red. That helps it as well. Not like that, right? Just right onto the brush. So we're just using the back side. Now, turning it over, remaining very flat. Almost, you can almost do it like this. Right? You can literally come in and tap it with just the top of the brush. You don't have to hold it like this. But don't come in straight at it, right? You do that, it's not going to be the same thing. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't act the same. So get down there on your knees, or however low you got to get, start tapping in little lines. Little lines, a little bit, start a little bit uh, longer, go back almost towards the same finishing spot. All right? Call that the little pivot point back there. All the way, we tap in these little grassy bits. How far? It's almost like, the hills are alive. <laughs> Way back here, a couple little differences, right? Not every bit of your grass is going to be all be exactly the same. You can even come back in, get a little bit more of our pinky white, dip down again to that same thing. It's all about the angle of the brush sometimes and how we're going, right? The further and further and further away we go, the less details we're going to have. And you leave that little dark line above your water, kind of sits your land up or vice versa, sinks your water down underneath, right? Now we'll put a big bush, a big tree over here. Let's put something there and maybe... We could do it. I'll show you. Okay, let's do that. What if, with our grass, first thing, we need to lift this guy up and put him out here on the edge of the easel, which is very dangerous. Okay? It's very dangerous over here because it could shoot out of the easel at any moment and go and come flying out, right? Just come flying out of the whole thing. So, remember, guys, tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Because we love to know. Now, if I got that same amount of our pinky whitish paint, right, we're going to let it, we're gonna let it get a little bit more white as we roll around here and we cut our river off. Right? Now it's come like this. Now it's having to turn. And go back in here and just kind of go back and forth over it until they're about the same. And just like that, you cut your river, you turned it, you made it roll back towards us out here in the front where it's literally going to fall off into our, our living room down here. Could be a big lake. You never know. You never know what it is. But I would imagine if that much water is coming down, it's got to be going somewhere, right? All right. Now we got to come back into that deep dark color and make up a shadowy mix. So, what are the three deep darknesses that we like to use in order to create a deep dark shadowy color? The deep shadowy, right? Paint with Josh plaque. Not, not that kind of plaque. Like purple black, plurkle, the madness mix, whatever we call it. For Monday Night Madness. You guys know this is episode two of Monday Night Madness. Just fantastic. Blue, black, and crimson, baby. Right? That's the color. Now, we're going to come back over here. Let's hide where our little waterfall comes from. And the way that we can do that, what I used to do when I was very first starting, I'd okay, paint the waterfall, then I'd paint some rocks, because uh, obviously it's got to be like a whole bunch of rock holding up the waterfall, and then I would do bushes, and I'd do all this stuff, and I would get to the front and realize I have to cover over all that stuff anyway. So, do less by doing, do more by doing less, right? We're going to come over here. 
I'm up in Tor Mountain, just down like this. Boom, right about straight where the waterfall is coming from, okay? Now, the waterfall itself leading out to it, the little bit of river, is probably about two inches. So I want to leave myself enough room that you're still going to be able to see the waterfall from behind the edge of the tree. Okay, you come out here like this, over to the side, holding the brush. The more we go down, the more that we push against our canvas board, in this case, right? Spreading out our branches, be a little thicker, starting to bounce side to side, side to side, right? Out this way, out that way, out this way, out that way. Down and back and down and back, all the way down as far as you want to go. A lot of paint on the brush, though. And that way you'll have all these little crazy, sticky, textury bits for our highlights to then stick onto. And you can already see, just from the light of the studio bouncing off of all the little, the little textury parts, you can almost see that tree coming to life already, right? And we've left our waterfall out in the distance. That I like. Let's come back since we got a little bit more paint on the brush. And what if we did a little guy right out here, just a a little doofus just right out there tapping in as we go down a little further 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 or we get down into our grass the further it's going to look down so if you come all the way down to your water boy oh boy your tree's about to fall off of your your river bank and into your water come back with our touch of grass onto our brush and just tap in around the base we need to decide where it sits how it looks all that stuff right we got one we got two why not so we can't put it back there. I mean, we could put it on a little, we could put a little sticky guy back here. We could do some little sticky guy. Now, the sticky trees, you want to make sure that the paint is very spread out on your brush, right? Very spread out, very thin, so you can make a very thin little dark line. Just like that, coming down. So you have this tree trunk versus a whole tree. Tap out the base. Just like that. We'll go back and highlight him, throw some branches on him. We'll call him good, baby. We'll call him good. Now, I'm going to go into a little bit of my lamp black. The lamp black from the Meaden set, right, is a super black paint, which allows you to crisscross over all this other stuff and just make the weirdest, craziest things that you've ever seen come down. And that black will stay black as it crisscrosses through all the white, barely changes. Dang. You get this big old curved tree back here. You guys know you like them curved. All the way back here, a little bit thicker at the bottom than it is at the top. And boom! Right down here into the foreground. How many of these guys do you want? They're totally up to you. Right, you could plop another dude in. He could be coming from this side and around the mountain. Bang! Growing from almost literally the same spot. Just having this bit of darkness with that color behind it, whether it be the mountain or the grass or the froggy mist, is going to help push it back into the distance, guys. So fantastic. You know what we're going to do, too? Oh, my dudes, my dudes. We could literally have a like a tree that fell across the river. Bring it right over here. Ah, we so could. We so could do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it, Josh. Before you start messing around, let's do it. Now, first things first, I'm going to come back and drag some of my color over here because I was going to put a big bush in front of that dark spot and now we're not. I put a big old fallen tree in front of it, right? So with a very thin amount and some of our lamp black from the meeting set, lamp like turn on a light bulb type lamp, okay? We go very skinny from way over here, very skinny against the thing, very small. A little bit more pressure gets it a little thicker. A little bit more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. How big do you want your tree to become? Totally up to us, right? Boom, boom, boom. Like it just literally shoop, fell across the riverbank. Fantastic. Now, you know what we're going to do with the rest of this dark color? Since I said we were going to have a bush in there, you guys know I like the bush. We're going to come back over here. Tap in a little bit of darkness around the base of these guys, kind of hiding all of our grass. So again, we didn't even really need to paint the grass, but I showed you how you can anyway. We'll go back and add our branches, throw some highlights on, and we'll be all set to go, guys. So this one's turning out fantastic. It's been a minute since I've done like a trippy, spacey scene. So thank you to the person who was talking mad crap on Facebook about how I can only paint the same mountains over and over and over again, because you 
sort of inspired this scene. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Now, let's come over here and decide what do we do with this crazy Ridgeback Mountain. The Ridge of a Mountain. Holy cow, did someone just buy this painting? You guys are joking. You're kidding me right now. I'll have to check the, uh, the thing, but I just saw it come up on the phone and said, cha-ching, baby, cha-ching. So, we're going to have to see who got this painting, right? Now, let's decide. We're going to add our highlights. We've got to come back and add in a couple little bits of trunk, too. So, little teeny bits back in here. Now, most of the trunk on these trees is going to be covered. So, don't worry about what it looks like, how big it is. Anything like that. It's all going to be covered up, for the majority of it anyway. Now, I like that kind of pinky color. What if we got a little touch of this, a little bit of pink on the edge, just on the side of the tree. Very small little bit. A couple little tip taps just to darken the color down, have it mix in with that other bit. Right? Take it further away. Very cool. you got to leave that dark line around the side, though. And all we're doing is using the same color from our grass to highlight our trees, right? So, off of this guy. Tap on the thing, start going up. And the more that we tap, the more that we go up, the more we're going to deposit paint, and the more that we're going to pick up that lamp black. Right? The lamp black is trying to make everything very dark. So every time you touch it, it's going to come back as black on your knife. Right? Go back in, a little bit more, spread it down. Don't have a whole huge chunk. You want a very small little chunk. Very small little roll, and that way it won't glob on there all crazily. It's done it on me before, it'll do it on you guys, I'm telling you. A little bit, tap in. Again, we're trying to leave this small line of dark around the, the back side. So on the left is the darkest place. On the right would be the lightest color. And that'll allow it to whoosh, all the way up, right? I'm all the way up, all the way up here. It'll start to pick up with our eye. You probably won't even notice the treetop when you're just looking at the moon until you get finished looking at this and you go, ooh, and it'll bring you right back up to start your journey over again. Over and over we go. Onto this side again, just on the outside of the tree on the side. Right? We're not trying to put it across the whole thing. A couple little taps, then we go back in next to it, like a typewriter. A couple little taps. Tap, 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 tap. Lighting up little pieces. We're not trying to light up the whole thing. We don't want the whole trunk to be as bright as everything out there. Right? You have to leave some darkness behind it. It helps make it look more round. Now, off of this guy, all of our light kind on the top of him, right? So we're going to come over here, a couple little taps, leaving the underside shadowy. Actually, the backside is shadowy. So we need to put our, our guys, our white, down here, right? So on the bottom of this guy, which doesn't make sense to your brain until you get back here, and it's very dark along the top, right? So we'd want to leave, like, a line cutting through, just like that. So half of it back here is dark, and the majority of it out here is light leaving a little bit of darkness along the bottom, and our tree is just falling across the river, guys. Now, let's go back in. We'll throw some uh, branches on these guys, and then we'll go back and highlight our trees, and we'll be all set to go. So you guys are going to have to start to come up with a name for our buyer, right? Somebody bought this painting, and they're going to need your help naming it. So with that Paint with Bram liner brush, our lamp black mix, and a little of our odorless mineral spirits, you can literally create branches off these trees that will flow right over mountaintops. They'll flow everywhere, just anywhere and everywhere, even so far as to come up and flick our mountain with our liner brush. That's how long it will travel, okay? And that Paint with Bram brush is not only 97 million light years long, but it just makes the most wicked branches, guys. I'm serious. I was like, I, I was going to put Bram in a home when he first brought this, this branch out. I was like, dude, we need to have a talk because something, I, there's, I, I don't think anybody's going to use this brand, this brush, right? Like, are you okay, Bram? Do you need us to call somebody? And then I started using the brush and I was like, holy cow, this is a wicked brush. I love this brush. Like the branches that come off of this brush are very sharp. You can go back, you can streak on different things, you can have different places. Ah, it's just so cool. And it just runs forever when that, it's got that uh, liquid uh, odorless mineral spirits in it. Create all these little branches off of our trees. So neat, guys. So neat. Now, let's decide, maybe since we got a nice bright sky, we come up and let's just sign the sucker while we're here with the bird family. 
before we finish our highlights, come up into here, I would imagine our family would might just be a little afraid of this explosion. We're flying out of here, man. Everybody get out of here now! <laughs> just crazy, right? So, oh, we forgot our branches on our, our fallen over tree. You guys almost forgot to tell me, guys. How could you do me like that? How are you going to do me like that, man? So, we'll come back in a little more of our odorless mineral spirits into our mead and lamp black. Like I said, you can put it back over here in our other pile. Now, off of these guys, I'm going to paint the same branches, right? Not every one of them has to be sticking up. Maybe some of them go into the water, and then we can go back and add little water lines. Maybe that one went out that side. This one came up over here, had a little branch coming off of here. Maybe we got more going down into the water. Maybe we got a big old right down into it. And I'll show you exactly how to make them look just right. A couple little bits off of here. A little streaker, a little poo. A little streaky poo over here and there. A couple little branches off of our tree. The more you do, the more you start to love it. And then, the more you do too much. And you're like, oh, dang, I should have left it before, you know, I added too many. Right? So, be careful. All up to you. And these guys just went right into the grassy bits way up there. Hanging down. They got all snapped as they came across. Right? Now, let's come over here. Come over there. <laughs> and then, this is going to be a cool one, you guys. Let's see, as far as our tree color, we're going to go with the blue, we're going to go with the white. So we need our small little fan brush. Just a little fan brush. And remember, since the buyer bought it during a live show, you get a chance at the free spinny winnie wheel. The spinny winnie wheel. Thank you for the gifts, guys. I appreciate you. Now, let's come in here with a little bit of our liquid white. Just a little touch. I'm going to go into my blue. That phthalo blue or your Prussian blue, whatever or your ultramarine or cerulean blue, whatever blue you have, use that blue, all right? A little bit off the back side of our guy over here. We just want to touch a few little baby taps with just the corner of the brush, not everything. The more little details that we see on this guy, the closer he becomes. And we don't want him to be close. We want him to be further away, all right? A couple little taps here, there, everywhere. Go back, wipe off the darkness, go back into a little bit more of our liquid white and our blue. Come back and off of this guy, off of his left side, Start tapping in little things, not trying to cover over all the dark bits. All right, not trying to cover over all the trunk that we painted. Got to leave little bits of our trunk in there. Little baby bits, right? Just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Very slowly, very lightly, covering up little places where not everything is all the same color, right? You don't have it just all blue. It's just not all white. You got to have that deep darkness in there. Now, this is how... How do I normally, guys, the guys that watch all the time, how do I normally explain on how you have to have that depth for your trees? How do I normally explain it? Say we're out here, we're in the woods, and we're either, we've either got a something or a something, and we throw it, and it goes inside the tree, and obviously the dog runs over the tree, and he can't get the frisbee or the ball out, right? So, you go over there. Now, you're not just going to ram your hand inside the tree. You're going to look for those open spaces where you can get inside ah, without getting poked too many times by all the branches and pull your Frisbee out, right? Unless you're just like Hulk strong. You're like, I don't care. Blah, just shove your hand right into the tree. You're going to look for those little open spaces. Now, the reason I say that is because that's how we've got to leave it so you can have those open spaces. A little bit of the liquid white in with a little bit of the titanium white. Can you just do it one or the other, or do you have to have both in order for this technique to work the way that it does? I get the question all the time. Can you do this with acrylics? Mm, not the same, right? We do the moon with acrylics, yes. We do the moon all day with acrylics. But the other parts, not really, right? We're gonna come across our blue into our shadowy side just a little, so you have that rounded look to it. Go back one more touch of our liquid white into the titanium white. Now, guys, can you just use the titanium white on its own? Or can you just use the liquid white on its own? Or do you have to, by Paint With Josh Law, use both, right? You can't just be using one or the other. we got to be using both. And that way, it'll come off of our brush a lot easier. We won't have to smack as hard, right? We're trying to leave little spaces in between each little tap. Have a little space, build out our branches, come out here, a little bit more, a little bit over our shadowy side, because you got to go back and forth and back and forth over different parts. 
and that way it'll look a little bit more 3D, right? Not trying to make everything the brightest bit you've ever seen. Just like that guy's got a wicked cool little tree, just covered in snowiness. This guy down here, leave a little bit like that. Boom, boom, boom. Come back on him and throw a teeny touch of our white with the liquid white. It'll help it come off of the knife and stay onto our tree trunk and give it this really cool feel to it. Like you'll literally, literally be able to feel it happening right now. Off of our last little bushy guy down there in the corner, you thought I might have forgotten. We'll go back in with the straight up blue. Pop it off of the back side, right? Back in here. And then we'll come back in, a little touch of our liquid white on the other side of the brush, right? So we had the top side using the blue, flipped it over, so now the top side is the white. Come in here, tap on these little baby touches so softly. Oh, don't want to cover up too much, right? Little baby touch. All you got to have, guys, seriously. The glass, the more you do, the more you're going to cover up all the dark. And then you're going to have a bush that's got way too much highlight on it, right? I would rather you have a, just a silhouette of a dark bush than have a bush that's covered too much in your highlights, right? So if you have an issue with putting on your highlights or, or maybe you dab on too much, try a little bit less next time. And see how you like your trees with just a little less highlight. They may end up looking just a 10 ton of an amount better, guys. You never know. Until you try. i to try it to find out, right? How did Josh learn how to paint? I tried it to find out. How did I know how to make a moon? I tried it, and then I tried it again, and then I tried it a third time, and then this was the fourth one, right? So, keep getting better as you go. Try something new. Take Josh's advice. You know, menage, I mean, anything you want. Try something new. Just get out there and have a good time. <laughs> And, you know, you don't got to tell us all about it, but, you know, I mean, I'd like to hear. I'm, I'm down for the, the, no. Okay, now, let's see. What frame did we get? I'm not even going to be able to know. I'm going to have to finish one of the tutorials and then go back to find it on my phone. So, let's say goodbye to everybody over on YouTube and on Facebook, and then we'll hang out on TikTok for a little while. If you guys uh, want to still continue to watch, follow me on TikTok. I'll probably be coming back again later on tonight doing another painting of some other mystery scene. So, uh, follow me over on tiktok.com slash at symbol, right? At paint with Josh K. And then you'll find my page over there. It's free to watch. You don't even have to put in any info. But make a, make, literally you can make a random email, like 123789 at 123789.com. Pow, that's your, your TikTok account. It doesn't even have to be a legit email. You don't even have to verify it. So. Get over there, follow me, come watch. It's a lot of fun, and uh, can't wait to see you guys on the next one. So, uh, what else do we normally say? Uh, to YouTube, I can't wait to see your version of this, guys. <laughs> I can't wait to see your version of this. Guys, please send it in, too. Paint with Josh. Sorry. I just messed up everything. Everything just gets messed up towards the end. Here we go, one more time. Well, guys, I can't wait to see your version of this painting. Please send it in to Facebook.com slash Josh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care.